Welcome back to Blood Talks. This episode is about blood component collection by atheresis and granulocyte transfusion. Throughout this video, I will tell you what the differences are between atheresis and whole blood collection, from processing and storage for each component type. We will also talk about granulocyte collection and why someone would need granulocyte transfusion. This episode is a part of series Blood Donation Journey. If you have not watched the other videos, I will leave links to them in the description box down below. Without further ado, let us click that like button, share, subscribe, and let's drive into today's episode. What does apheresis mean? Apheresis comes from a Greek word, apheros. I'm not sure if I said that correctly or not, but if you know how to say it correctly, please let me know in the comment down below. Apheros means to take from. When it comes to blood collection, apheresis means only collect the part that needed. There are actually two main techniques for apheresis, centrifugation and membrane-based apheresis. In the United States, centrifugation technique is the primary, whereas the membrane technique is the primary technique in Europe and Japan. Apheresis by centrifugation Donor blood will not be drawn directly into a collection bag but will be connected to an apheresis machine. Apheresis machine will take whole blood from a donor, centrifuge it down, only collect the desired component, and then return the remaining components to the donor. If the donor is donating platelet, platelet will be the only component that it is being collected. Red blood cells and plasma will be separated out and returned to the donor as much as possible. What is the process for apheresis? Is there a different donor requirements? What are the screening process? The answer is no, but there are some exceptions. Components collection by apheresis follow the same rules, regulation, and guideline as the whole blood collection for the most part. Once you know the donor requirements for whole blood collection, learning about apheresis requirement is not much different. There are some specific requirements that are added on for a pharesis donor, but that should not be something that discourages anyone from learning about it or becoming an a pharesis donor. Donor has to pass a strict donor screening process, same as whole blood collection. I am glad that there are not another whole set of rules and regulations. What do you think? Laboratory does the same donor testing for a pharesis donation as whole blood donation. Donor testing tests for ABO groups, arch type, follow antibodies, and transfusion transmitted disease are tested for each unit. However, there are some exceptions that I will mention when we go over each specific component. In short, the collection and process are different, but the storage, transportation, and quality control stay the same. The most obvious difference between the two methods is the collection time. Apheresis collection takes a lot longer during the collection process than a whole blood collection. This is one of the reasons why the majority of blood drives events are collecting whole blood units. Some donors also prefer to donate whole blood because they only need to spend really little time donating instead of about 2 hours for apheresis. Let's start with the first component, platelet apheresis. About 90% of platelet transfusion in the United States comes from apheresis platelet. Apheresis platelet is also a preferred type of product for patients with platelet refractory and patients with HLA antibody. CLS can perform platelet and HLA crossmatch or compatibility tests for this patient to enhance the effectiveness of the platelet transfusion. If you want to know about platelet refractory and HLA antibody, please let me know and I can cover them in a later video. But today, we will be focusing on apheresis. The benefits of platelet apheresis are First, decreased chance of contamination since there is less product processing and handling involved. Second, Platelet apheresis also allow patients to have less exposure to donor's antigen. Each unit of platelet from apheresis is more potent than platelet derived from whole blood donation. 
one units of a phrasis platelet is an equivalent to approximate 4 to 6 units of whole blood derived platelet. The platelet apheresis property. First, minimum requirements of platelet per apheresis platelet units is 3 times 10 to the 11 platelets in 90% of sampled units. Second, the platelet is suspended in 250 to 300 ml of plasma. With a newer technology, apheresis collection become more efficient and the original units may be split into multiple units as long as each unit meets a minimum platelet count requirement. Third, a unit of platelet must contain less than 5 times 10 to the 6 leukocytes per unit. Fourth, the storage of a phrasic platelet is the same as the unit of platelet derived from whole blood collection, which is stored at room temperature 20 to 24 degrees Celsius, agitated, and has 5 days expiration from the time of collection. Platelet apheresis donor may donate more often than whole blood donor. Platelet apheresis donors are deferred for at least 2 days, no more than 2 times a week, and no more than 24 times a year. If the donor last donations for platelet apheresis is less than 4 weeks, some donation center will do initial platelet count. The initial platelet count should be above 150,000 microliter to prevent platelet count to be less than 100,000 microliter post donation. Plasma apheresis. The donor for plasma apheresis has to meet the same basic requirements as whole blood donor. However, the frequency of donation is different. This is because for plasma apheresis, donor lost less red blood cells. After a plasma apheresis, the donor is deferred for 4 weeks, but in some case of serial plasma apheresis, the donor can donate more frequently. Handling a unit of plasma from apheresis is different from the whole blood donation. There is no post-collection process for plasma apheresis. Plasma apheresis has 12 months shelf life when kept at minus 18 degrees Celsius or lower. The characteristics and the uses are the same as whole blood derived plasma. Links to that in the description box below. Red blood cell apheresis and multi component donation. A single unit of red blood cell apheresis is not commonly done. It is more common to collect red blood cell apheresis with other components. In 2001, the FDA has provided a guideline for red blood cells and multi-component apheresis donation. Please take a look at the table here. These type of donations have stricter donor requirements than regular whole blood donation. Donors still have to meet all the basic donor requirements. The additional requirements are first. A minimum hematocrit of 40%. Second, a male donor have to weigh at least 130 pounds with a minimum height requirements of 5 feet 1 inches. Third, a minimum weight for female donors is 150 pounds and the height requirement is 5 feet 5 inches. This additional requirement is to ensure the donor's safety. The donor will be deferred for 8 weeks post donation and 16 weeks for double red cell donation. I have more detail for each type of multi component donations and deferral interval here, so you can check it out. Granulocyte apheresis. The topic of granulocyte transfusion continues to be controversial. Granulocyte transfusion is usually a last resort to help patients fight infection. The granulocyte migrate toward the pathogen and kill bacteria and fungus. The goal in this type of transfusion is to provide the patient with enough granulocyte to help fight the infections. Basically, we are giving the patient enough guns and bullets and hope for the best. 
for granulocyte apheresis, the donor needs to be stimulated to produce more granulocytes and those granulocytes need to be migrated to bloodstream prior collection. An acceptable granulocyte collection is more than 1 times 10 to the 10 per unit. The final volume is around 200 to 300 ml. Granulocytes have a unique storage requirement, which is to be stored at room temperature 20 to 24 degrees Celsius, not agitated, and it is expired in 24 hours post collection. Due to the short expirations of the granulocyte, the donor's infectious disease testing is not completed by the time the product is transfused to the patient. This is a risk that the physician must discuss with the patient beforehand. There is no guideline as to how much granulocyte transfusion can increase neutrophil in patient. However, the granulocyte transfusion is usually administered daily until the adequate neutrophil count is maintained and or the patient shows signs of improvement. This is Black Black Black, Black, Black Fun Time! Do you know how the blood processing center knows that the product is kept frozen the whole time before thawed out for the patient? That is a simple rubber band trick. We would put a rubber band around the units to make the units kink a little then freeze the unit. After the unit is frozen, the rubber band is removed. A frozen unit will have a fold where the rubber band was placed. If the units is thawed out during the transit or at any point during the storage, the units will no longer have that fold and that unit should not be used for transfusion without any further investigation because the storage temperature may be compromised. This is an old trick used by blood component processing facility, but now there are more sophisticated ways to monitor temperatures during storage and transit. This rubber band trick is not commonly used anymore, but in my opinion, it is still a good visual clue. What do you think? I am curious. Is anyone watching this working at a blood component processing center? How is the process here similar or different than yours? Do you still use the rubber band trick? Did anyone count how many times I said the word apheresis? I think it is more times than anyone wanted to count. Anyhow, what do you think about apheresis and granulocyte transfusion? That is it for today's episode. There are some specific requirements that are added on for apheresis donation, but that should not be something that discourages anyone from learning or becoming an apheresis donor. It is always good to give, especially when that can save life. Thank you for staying with me until the end. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave me a comment down below. Lastly, if you have not done so, please like, share, subscribe, and click that notification bell. I will see you in the next episode of Blood Talk. As always, remember, your blood tells you the story of your health. Thanks for watching. Bye!